Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a rational exponential expression. We have 2 to the power 7 plus 2 to the power 7 plus 2 to the power 8 plus 2 to the power 9 plus 2 to the power 10, all divided by 4 to the 6 plus 4 to the 6 plus 4 to the 6 plus 4 to the 6, four times. Okay, and we're going to simplify this expression as much as possible. I'm going to talk about uh, a way to combine these kinds of expressions and also uh, talk about the properties that I'm using. Properties of exponents are important, so I'll also be making a video, uh, a lecture video on those. Anyways, so let's start with this. So you can go ahead and take out a common factor, obviously. For these kinds of problems, you can always do that. That's probably a different method. Uh, the first method that I'd like to use is the following. So let's start with the first method. I'm going to combine these two things. Why? Because they have the same power. So 2 to the 7th plus 2 to the 7th. Uh, by the way, I know that it's 128, but adding them just uh, adding them up is not just going to help me. It's 256, but that doesn't help. So we're going to work with the exponents. 2 to the power 7 added to itself is basically 2 times 2 to the power 7. And since this is 2 to the 1st, you can write this as 2 to the 8th power. So which property of exponents I used here? a to the m times a to the n equals a to the power m plus n. So when you multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponents. Great, so now that gave us 2 to the 8th power. So now that 2 to the 8th can be combined with 2 to the 8th. But notice what happened to 2 to the 7th power. When I added it to itself, the exponent went up by 1. Why? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. If you add 2 to the x and 2 to the x, you get 2 times 2 to the x, and it just becomes 2 to the power x plus 1. So adding them together basically increases the exponent. So looking at the original expression one more time, let me rewrite it. And we have the 2 to the 7th twice. Oops, not the 2 to the 8th. And then all of that is divided by 4 to the 6 plus 4 to the 6 plus 4 to the 6 plus 4 to the 6. Now these two combined gave me 2 to the 8th. So now I have 2 to the 8th plus 2 to the 8th plus 2 to the 9th plus 2 to the 10th divided by the denominator. I can also call that just D because I'll deal with D at the end. So now we can combine these two things. That becomes 2 to the 9th. To keep a long story short, 2 to the 9th plus 2 to the 9th is 2 to the 10th, and 2 to the 10th plus 2 to the 10th is 2 to the power 11. So the numerator gives us 2 to the 11, and the denominator, I can write it as 4 times 4 to the power 6, because I'm adding it 4 times. And again, by the same rule, we can add the exponent, and this becomes 2 to the power 11 divided by 4 to the power 7. Now, another property of exponents will be used, which is the power of a power, so I can write the 4 as 2 squared, and then raise it to the 7th power, and now 2 and 7 are exponents, and they are multiplied, giving us 2 to the power 11 divided by 2 to the power 14. And that becomes 2 to the power 11 minus 14, which is 2 to the power negative 3, and you can basically write it as 1 over 2 to the power 3, and that is 1 over 8. Great. Okay, so that's basically one way to approach this problem. And let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. All right, so the second method, and let's, the, let's write the original problem first. 2 to the 7th plus 2 to the 8th plus 2 to the 9th. I have, I forget to write it twice. Okay, and then this is 4 to the 6th, 4 to the 6th. 4 to the 6 and 4 to the 6. So my second method is going to rely on the following. I'll find a common factor. And among these, if you look at the numerator first, this is the smallest power, so it makes sense if you take out 2 to the power 7. And remember, 2 to the power 8 can be written as 2 to the 7 times 2. This can be written as 2 to the 7 times 2 squared, and this is 2 to the 7 times 2 to the 3rd. So when I take out 2 to the 7, it's going to give me 1 plus 1, plus 2, plus 2 squared, plus 2 cubed. And that is going to be divided by. Now, what am I going to do at the bottom? At the bottom, I can just go ahead and take out a 4 to the 6, because that's the greatest common factor, and I get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. 
So that kind of gives you the same thing, but slightly different approach, as you can see. So what am I going to do with the rest? Okay, let's just add up everything in, inside the parentheses. 2 to the 7th. And now 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. So this becomes 16. And then this is 4 to the 6, and this becomes 4. Now notice that everything is a power of 2, so why not just you know, write everything as a power of 2? But before that, we can go ahead and simplify this. 4 goes into 16 4 times, and also we can simplify this, take out one of the 4s, and we end up with 2 to the 7 divided by 4 to the 5th. And, again, as before, 4, 4 can be written as 2 squared to the 5th, this is 2 to the 7th divided by 2 to the 10th. By subtraction, we get 2 to the power negative 3 again, and that is 1 over 8, as before. So let's go ahead and summarize the properties we used, and now we'll just finish up. So the property, the first property we used was a to the m times a to the n equals a to the power m plus n. The second one was the power of a power a to the m to the power n equals a to the power mn. And the third property was the negative exponent a to the power negative n can be written as 1 over a to the power n. You can also write it as 1 over a to the power n. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.